All right, so this piece of baseboard from this corner here to that corner there is what we're working on today. And as we look closely at the baseboard, we've got all kinds of stuff like nail heads that are sticking out and uh, this old door stop thing where the screw is stripped out and stuck in there. And I've got nasty caulk beads. Look rough. Oh, this looks rough. You've got nail heads, you've got bad caulk, you've got just bumps and debris in the paint. You've got this, looks like they took brown caulk and tried to seal the gap between the floor and the base shoe. There's no need for that. And obviously they did it on top of the finished paint, which just made this brown mess on top of the baseboard. So I'm going to deal with that. Uh, moving on down, just a couple more things. You just got like boo-boos like that and more nails sticking out. You've got nail holes that need to be filled. Moving on down to this corner. Oh, um, yeah, the caulk is all cracked out. It's dirty. There's gaps. There's bugs. And it just looks really gross. So the first thing we're going to do is take a nail set. Uh, this is a spring-loaded nail set. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it if you're going to be doing a lot of painting. Get them at Home Depot or Lowe's or the paint store or whatever for 10 or 12 bucks. And this is how it works. you got a nail head that's backed out a little bit. Lay it on there. Snap, snap. Hmm. Set nail. That's pretty cool. There's also an old school method with a hammer, and this is an old fashioned nail set. It's actually a newer version of an old fashioned nail set, but most people have these laying around or they're easily accessible and they're cheaper than the spring loaded one. And it works just like that. Put it on the nail head, tap, tap with the hammer, and it's set. And we're just working our way all the way down, setting all the nails. You know, you don't want to drive it through the wall. So, and now I'm actually feeling with my fingers. I know I'm looking as well, but I'm feeling with my fingers for any nail heads that maybe just aren't that noticeable. You always want to be feeling your woodwork. Wait a minute. Anyway, so now we're going to cut out this caulk. It's gross. It needs to come out of there and be redone. So here's my trusty snap knife. And um, it comes with a nice sharp tip and it's segmented so you can snap little pieces off as it gets dull. And uh, here what I'm doing is I'm going to actually cut parallel to the wall as I cut the caulk out from this angle. And then I'm going to cut parallel to the top of the baseboard. And basically what I'm doing is making a 90 degree cut to get that piece of caulk out of there as cleanly as possible. Just being careful, don't want to cut myself, don't want to shred the wall, don't want to shred the baseboard. Carefully picking it out of there, looking at it, and uh, that's just a starting point. Um, most of the time you will have to go over it and over it more than one time. Um, and, you know, I should say that if the painting was done properly, the prep and painting was done properly, this really wouldn't be an issue right now, or not near as bad as one. Right now I'm just taking my time making 90 degree cuts the best I can, parallel cuts, and uh, trying to get that little corner cleaned out. You can see there's a gulb in there, gulb of caulk. These things are hard to pronounce many times. There we go, finally, finally got it, yeah. Woohoo! Let's celebrate by moving on. And I'm going back over it. And the reason I'm showing all this detail is because most people don't realize, yeah, you have to go back over it and over it, especially when it was done poorly and you're getting rid of someone else's bad work. Moving on to the next piece of caulk just below. And again, parallel to the wood as much as possible. And I want to take a moment also to point out that this small disposable snap knife is the tool of choice for this kind of work. I buy two or three of these at a time. It's my everyday carry. A regular utility knife is just too big and bulky for this kind of precision cutting. I'm going in at 90 degree angles or as closely as possible to remove the first piece that I cleanly can. And then I'm moving on to remove the next piece as cleanly as I can. You know, it's important to be meticulous, 
At this point, this is where the beauty of the woodwork comes from, from all the prep and detail, getting all this cook out so that we can caulk it cleanly. Speaking of caulking, this brown caulk that someone put between the base shoe and the floor, I don't know why they did this. Uh, it shouldn't be done. And uh, keep in mind that scraping it out like this is a very great way to scratch your floor. I am a trained professional. However, I do encourage you to try this at home because uh, there's really no other way to get this out. And it shouldn't have been done. And uh, yeah, it's just a real bummer when you got to fix someone else's bad work. But it can be done. So yeah, we carry this on all the way around. You can see I got a pile of debris building up. Um, it's good to gather this and scoot it out of the way. Um, you, you can get as crazy with this as you want. If it's your house, you know, I say take the time and do it right. Um, if you're charging people money for this, I say take the time, do it right, and charge them for the time. Here's the corner. Corners are usually really bad. Um, they require more patience and uh, more skill. You're on your knees, you're crouched in a corner. It's not that much fun. And um, usually the, the caulk and the paint, the primer, is just really all gobbed up together in that area. And as you can see, I'm working my way down, making a pile of debris and then cleaning up after myself. Now I'm using a brush attachment on the end of my shop vac. I feel this is key. Um, you want that brush attachment, it really helps get the dust out. Okay, blue tape on a finished floor. Blue tape is for finished surfaces. And because we've cleared all that gook out from under the baseboard, I now have a nice gap to slide the tape up under that little piece of base shoe, I should say. And then I'm going to take my handy five in one or any flat edge really and knife that down. Just flattening it down, getting the air bubbles out, getting a good seal on the floor. So again, blue tape is for finished surfaces. That's a finished hardwood floor. We're not using yellow tape. Here I'm pointing out a small hole that was in the tape, probably from the factory or something. Um, it was the first strip of tape that I peeled off and um, you don't leave those there. This is called attention to detail. And we're covering that hole, knifing it down, and we're good. Next, we're going to move on to this corner. And a lot of people uh, kind of neglect corners, but that's a place where paint can get onto the floor. So let's take the time to rip a piece off and put it under there. Now, this is one of my favorite tricks. I take a knife or a five-in-one or a putty knife, whatever you got, and I can get a nice clean edge, a straight edge, rip a piece off that'll neatly fit up under that wood and protect the floor and knife it down. I can't stress the importance. I can't stress the importance of knifing it down enough. There we go. And I'm still not that happy with it. So I'm going to rip off another piece, put it under there and just make sure that if any paint dribbles under there, it's not going to hit the wood and bleed out through the grain and make something ugly that'll catch your eye across the room. So with that started, we just work our way down the wall systematically. I'm ripping off a manageable piece at a time. How big of a piece should you rip off? Whatever's manageable for you, uh, rip that off. Slide it up under there as best you can. Make sure it's knifed down. Check your work. If you miss something, you know, redo it or slide another piece of tape in there. Okay, so now that everything's taped down, we can start sanding. And uh, this is going to be a real good grind on this baseboard. We've set the nails, um, we've dug the caulk out, and now we're just going to get some 150 grit sandpaper. That's pretty rough, 150 grit sandpaper. And we're really going to grind on this baseboard. Now, one thing the tape does is it protects the floor from paint, but it also is protecting the floor from the sandpapers, which is why we put it down now. Now, I am holding the sandpaper in such a way and using my small finger as a guide to keep the sandpaper just off the floor because you don't want to grind on the tape because it will grind through and uh, yeah we just gave it a real good grind systematically every square inch from one end to the other we've made quite a mess and uh, now we're cleaning it up again with the brush attachment on the vacuum cleaner 
checking it over. Looks pretty good. See all the caulks dug out. All the big knobs are grinded off. And now it's time to get wood filler and start filling gaps. So all the nail holes we set, um, you can use a putty knife or you can use a finger. It just depends. Putty knives are great for flatter surfaces. Fingers are just usually required for curved surfaces. Um, you can use your finger to manipulate it and push it around. Um, the idea is to push it into the hole and fill the gap completely. So if you can imagine, um, you don't want air pockets. You want it filled completely. So you see I'm pushing it in. I'm pushing it back and forth, different directions. And uh, making sure the hole is filled completely. And then we're just going to work our way right on down systematically, filling each hole. See how I'm going over it in different directions? Just to make sure it's filled completely, working it into the hole. Now, you also want to be careful not to do any. Oh, see there, I'm grinding off a piece of something that I missed. I always want to be checking your work. Oh, and here's, and here's a big chunk of caulk I didn't get out the first time. Want to get rid of that while you're at it. And then continuing on with wood filler. And yeah, I did the whole wall, I guess, and it's dry. And so now we're sanding. Now you don't want to grind all the wood filler out that you just put in the hole. So I'm actually approaching each one of these wood filled holes from the edges. Let's call it a patch. I've patched the holes with wood filler and I'm approaching the edge. See, this is a bigger patch. And that edge is where the hard edge, if you were to paint that right now, the hard crusty edge from around that wood filler patch would be what shows first, would be what's casting shadow. So we smooth out the edges first. And notice I keep feeling it with my finger. Is it rough or is it smooth yet? If it's rough, I keep sanding. And if it's smooth, I move on to the inside of the patch. I think a lot of people are surprised at how smooth you can get a nail hole to be. Uh, wood filler is made to do just this, and you can virtually make a nail hole disappear both to the touch and to sight um, in, you know, 95% of the time, if not 100. And then, of course, after that, we got to clean up our mess, all the dust with the brush attachment. Okay, so after we've sanded all the wood-filled holes, I'm going to get some masking paper and protect the rest of this floor. Now notice there's blue tape on the floor because it's a finished surface and there's yellow tape on the masker. Yellow tape is for unfinished surfaces. It would damage the hardwood floor if we put it on and tried to pull it off, most likely. So I'm ripping off a piece of paper and I'm making sure it's just enough to where the yellow tape doesn't touch the floor, it's only touching the blue tape. So yellow tape on blue tape, not yellow tape on hardwood floor. And you can just use blue tape if you want for everything, but it is expensive and yellow tape does stick better. That is the trade-off. Yellow tape sticks better, but it damages the floor. Blue tape doesn't stick as well, but it usually won't damage the floor. And now that we've got the corner, spread a long piece all the way down. Now I'm ripping it off carefully. I don't want to hit the floor or the door or myself because that piece of metal is sharp. It'll scratch anything. And I'm using blue tape again uh, to secure the paper to the floor. This keeps it from moving around. Actually makes it pretty strong when it's secured properly. And there's me running my hand over the tape, making sure it's down nice. You can knife it down, but be careful not to scratch the floor in a big long run like that. And then a drop cloth, 4x12 runner. And spread that out and actually use yellow tape to secure the drop cloth to the paper. And then I'm going to use blue tape again to secure the drop cloth to the hardwood floor where there's no paper. Okay, so this is Kills. It's what they had at Home Depot. Uh, interior exterior there's a lot of things on the label main things we're looking at is multi-surface sealer and stain blocker now stain blocking is great mildew resistance is great all that stuff's good but what we really want is multi-surface and the water based is nice as well because it cleans up with water and dries much faster 
So the reason all purpose is important is because we actually have multiple materials. We've got wood, we've got wood filler, and this base shoe isn't wood. It's actually PVC or fiberglass or something, some sort of plastic. And uh, But we've got three different surfaces here, and the primer is going to coat all of it and create one uniform surface that paint will stick to. Small dip into primer. Push it into the corner. Fill the gaps and then pull it out. Don't forget this little end of the base shoe here. Most people miss that. It's important. You can see it. If it's dark and everything else is light, it really stands out. And again, uh, my technique is to dip, spread it out. Notice I'm doing the broad part first, and I'll go to the top, and I make sure my bristles get into that gap there. And then I'll do a dip running along the baseboard, and then pull it out. Then a couple of strokes just to blend it all together. You can notice this over and over. Dip, spread it out, fill in that top gap, dip, get the base shoe, spread it out. And we take it on down. Oh, look at me going to this corner. Just get it in that corner. People are so timid. You got to jam those bristles in there. Fill that gap with primer because we're going to be caulking in there. Not only does it help the paint stick, but it helps the caulk stick. So you want to make sure it's in there shoving it in and then pulling it out. And uh, also make sure you're always checking your work, go back over it, make sure there's no run strips or errors. And uh, yeah, let's clean that out right away. A lot of people I notice, they let their brushes sit around until they dry out and are ruined. You know that right away, the primer needs time to dry anyway. So now the primer's dry. So I'm gonna take a little bit of drywall mud and get a thin strip on the very edge of my blade. I'm using a six inch blade right here. I'm going to go right to the edge and I'm pushing in and then pulling up. Pushing in and then pulling up. I'm filling that hole, pushing it into the hole, then pulling up. Two separate motions. And you kind of smooth it out there. And you know, you got some time, so work with it. I mean, don't play with it forever. Um, drywall is actually a lot of fun, it's a lot like sculpting, sort of. Kind of a 2D way. But again, a little strip, and I'm pushing it in there, and I'm going to work my way all the way down the wall, just fine tuning this edge. Pushing it in and pulling up. On down the wall. So after that's done and had time to dry, I'm going to start sanding. Uh, the drywall patches and the same thing I'm approaching at the edge of the patch and I'm feeling with my hand making sure the edge is smooth and when the edge is smooth that's when I go down to the main body of the patch. Again work my way down the wall feeling as I go. It's important I'm feeling with my fingers I'm looking but I'm also feeling and making sure it's smooth to the touch. And uh, then we'll back it again. Just made more dust. And then we're just going to take some small dips and prime the drywall as well. Now, why didn't we just prime everything all at once? Why didn't we do the drywall? Why didn't we do the drywall repair earlier? Because drywall is very delicate, and I want to do this separately and pay attention to it specifically, and make sure it's all smoothed out and it's not screwed up by the rough grinding on the woodwork and baseboard and the wood filler, that sort of thing. And so now we're just running over it with some 220 sandpaper. Uh, very, very lightly. This isn't a grind. This is just to knock off any dust particles or anything like that. It fell on the primer while it was drying. I'm going to vacuum up whatever dust we made right there. And now we've got smooth wood and drywall that's been primed that's ready to be caulked together. So today I'm just using 950A from Sherwin-Williams. It's what I had on hand. If you go to Home Depot, they're going to have Alex or Alex Plus. Those are both great. There's all kinds of brands. Um, what I recommend is just make sure it says siliconized latex. Just make sure it's paintable. Siliconized latex, not silicone. Siliconized latex, paintable. That's what you want. Good old white 
works great. Colored caulks are for specialty purposes. And I'm cutting a small hole close to the tip at a 45 degree angle. And then that makes a pretty sharp point. And I'm actually just gonna take my blade and just slice the tip of that point off so it's not so pointy. So it's angled, but it's got a little bit of a blunt tip. And this gives me the perfect angle and tip to start injecting caulk into these gaps. I like to start in corners and you'll see why I hope in a minute. But I just hit this corner a few different ways. And then the key here is I'm not just wiping away the excess. I'm actually pushing the caulk into the gap as I wipe away. And the contour of my finger is actually making kind of a beveled surface. You see I'm pushing it down into the gap as I wipe away. I'm cleaning my finger off after each one. You want a moist finger. That's a wet rag I'm using. There's a bucket of water next to me to keep rinsing my rag out, keep the rag clean. Constantly cleaning and wetting my finger. And here I'm just actually, I'm more smoothing the excess out. I'm smoothing the caulk out and wiping away what little excess remains. So now that I've got the corner done, I can start working my way down the rest of the baseboard. In this case, it's not very far until I get to the next corner. And uh, you know, the bead should be, you know, enough caulk to fill the gap, but not so much that when you run your finger across it, it splooges everywhere. This can be quite messy. I'll admit this does take practice, but you know, gotta start somewhere. And uh, yeah, I'm running my finger back and forth different directions, working into the hole to fill it completely, much like the wood filler. Once we've done that, we can move to this corner. And again, I'm angling the caulk gun and the tip to where the caulk actually is. I'm trying to get it down into the gap as much as possible. And actually when it starts to splooge out from the sides just a little bit is when I start pulling the gun and drawing a bead. And I've just found another piece of gook that I didn't get out earlier. You want to get that out now, don't leave it in there. Hopefully you can see why at this point, why you want a nice even gap so you can get a nice even bead filling the gap. And that's going to be a, a bead of caulk that lasts a long time and doesn't crack out as soon. And then mushing it in as I wipe away the excess. Going back a couple different directions, smoothing it out, keeping my finger wet. And after I've pushed it in there real good, and then I go through a more gentle process of wiping away the excess, smoothing it out, because even your little fingerprints in the caulk will show. So basically every motion is a swiping motion with my finger. So I'm not leaving lines from my finger fingerprints. Crazy, right? And then here, as we go down the straightaway, uh, it's much more manageable stretches. You notice I'm running beads out that are quite a bit longer probably three or four feet. You don't really have much time to work the caulk. Um, you need to get it right in the first, you know, half a minute or so. Not play with it too much, it just gets bad. And then we're finishing off in this corner. You see all the same principles at work here. And after it's dry, we're going to vacuum again, just to keep it clean. And uh, then we're going to wipe it down uh, with a wet cloth, lightly damp cloth, just to get all the extra little pieces of dust and dirt that we can off as clean as possible. You can go as crazy with this as you want. They sell wax impregnated cloth that you can wipe over it to really, really, really get the dust down. And so this is just bare, uh, mixed to the color of high hide white, taking a small dip, tapping the sides of my brush, shoving in the corner and pulling it out, getting that little edge that most people ignore. And uh, yeah, pretty much just like the primer, except uh, the woodwork is smooth and caulked and ready to be painted. 
getting that top edge, getting a little dip, getting it on the base U, spreading it out onto the next section. And on down we go. Again, it's basically the same as a primer. I'm getting uh, a large dip and spreading it over the main piece of the baseboard and then smoothing it out over the top edge, filling in that gap, and getting the base shoe, blending it all together. Just like with the primer, cram it into the corners with my bristles. And pulling it out, smoothing it out. I'm always looking back and checking over what I just did to make sure there's no runs, drips, or errors. So now here I'm dipping my bristles into paint just to get them wet. And then I'm hanging the brush on the side of the paint can with some yellow tape to where the tips of the bristles are not touching the bottom of the can. You want it just above the bottom of the can and I throw a wet cloth over it and the brush will stay fresh for, I'd say this was about an hour I waited before I hit the second coat. And so an hour later, my brush is just ready to go. Start the second coat. This is just a repeat of the first coat. And on down the line. Oh, see, I'm taking the time to get a little piece of dirt out of there. Now's the time. You literally got a minute or two to get stuff like that out. You got to get it as you go. I'm constantly looking back up the baseboard, making sure there's no paint running or dripping or anything like that. In the corner. And bam, second coat's done. Now the big paper, you can pretty much just kind of rip off like a monkey or something. Just, just pull away. Okay, but the blue stuff stuck under the base shoe, a lot of times it'll come up just fine, no problems whatsoever. Uh, but a lot of times you gotta work at it and work at it. Use your little razor knife, get those little bits and pieces, be patient. You don't wanna scratch your newly painted baseboard. You don't wanna scratch the floor. Don't wanna cut yourself. And uh, yeah, just work your way down, being meticulous. See there, I'm using my razor knife just to kind of score any bridge paint. Sometimes it helps the tape come up a little better. And uh, there actually wasn't any paint bleed, which is good, I guess. It means it was masked properly, but at the same time, I don't get to show you how to deal with paint bleed, which isn't that big a deal. Especially if you get it right away. But uh, yeah, pull it up and... Uh, you know, I'm just cleaning up a little stuff with my knife, a little piece of tape there, and kind of just hit it real quick with my wet cloth, just to clean it. And uh, yeah. This actually took about 15 minutes. What a pain. And uh, you know, hold up your drop, vacuum, and voila, we're done. So we took some really nasty baseboard that looked like this and uh, turned it into some much better looking baseboard. And as you can see, it's not perfect, but I think a before and after is definitely stark in difference. And uh, you went from this nasty corner to this beautiful corner. Now you can see there's a couple of flaws. Um, you know, it's a lot better, but that's still there. And I probably could have took a little more time paying attention to detail. Um, perhaps you think you could do better. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you received any value whatsoever from this video and would like to see more being made, hit like and subscribe and or support us through our Patreon link in the description box below. And remember, caulk and paint makes a carpenter what he ain't.